It's so good to be in the house of the Lord and feel the presence of Jesus tonight as we were singing. You can't speak his name or raise your hands to worship him, but he doesn't take notice. He said he dwells in the praises of his people. So I felt him come in here and, and uh, touch us, and then in return we reach out and touch him. It's a mutual so society, Brother Doug, that we touch God and he touches us right back. Sometimes we, we reach out first and he responds to us, and sometimes he touches us and we respond to him. Right. I'm glad to have Brother Doug with us tonight. Appreciate Brother Doug. We love his family and love his brothers, Dwayne and Dave and Brother Doug. And do anything for Brother Doug. Brother Doug, I never see you go homeless. I never see you hungry. I'd supply the need. Anything I could do. I love Brother Doug and appreciate him. He's... Uh, I've known him since he was just a, a boy, and he's known me since I was a young man. <laughs> That's been a while back. There's some things we can do for people that God permits us to do, and be friends and help somebody if they're hungry or if they're in a need. But there's some things we just can't do, and it's just in God's hands. Uh, death is something that comes to every individual. It comes to every family. You know, someone, they, people aren't careful. They'll say, well, you know, it's uh, uh, God's judgment. God's angry. Or, you know, people come up with all kind of ideals, uh, uneducated ideals, uh, Death just comes to every family. It comes to every individual. That's why the gospel was preached by our Lord and Savior. That he said he came not to condemn the world. That was came out of Jesus' own mouth in John, the third chapter. He said, I came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He's here to save us, isn't he? And... Uh, I was telling Michael, death is not an enemy to God's children. Death is a door out of this world. I don't expect to, uh, to uh, leave this world without the uh, physical death of my body. Uh, I do know there's a catching away of the bride, but there might be a debate on what happens to the body. It ceases to function at that point, just like in death. It wouldn't in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, you'd be caught up into a, uh, into a new body. <clears throat> but uh, for the ungodly, death is an end of suffering and sorrow that they have experience in a world without God. God's there, but they don't know him. So a world without God would have to be full of a lot of grief and sorrow, anxiety and fear. What's going to happen? And there's some people salace themselves with lies, false teaching that Everybody lives forever and goes to a better place. Our people are reincarnated and they come back as some other kind of creature and that continues to happen. They never go out of existence. Or they serve some unknown God. Or they worship the sun, moon, and stars. Or possibly even worship mankind himself. They worship the creature more than the creator, believing that man is too elevated, too intelligent, uh, too important to die and go out of existence, that they're going to go on. Everyone goes on. Too, 
the term a better place. Well, there is a better place, but it's with God, only in the presence of God. That's why the doorway of death, when the ungodly go in, that door, they don't come out. That's God's mercy. Whether you believe it or not, it's God's mercy that uh, man's mercy is not there. Man says they go in a doorway and their hall leads to a horrible fiery pit where they're tortured and tormented eternally. Not a thousand years. Not 10,000 years. The clock is broke. They're just tortured eternally. God is a merciful God. Even to those that don't love him and serve him, he said, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. You know, you never take pleasure in the death of anybody. I take no pleasure in anybody's death. God doesn't take pleasure in death, but death does come. Paul said to God's children by the birth, blood birth of Abraham, it was necessary that the word of God should have first been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life and judge yourself worthy of everlasting death. Lo, I turn to the Gentiles. Now, I added a little sentence in there, but it's correct. What they chose, instead of life, they chose death. God didn't have to judge them. They judged themselves. So we're seeking, aren't we, our Lord and Savior, to help us in our endeavor, in this fight, a faith, to keep the faith. Paul said, these light afflictions which are but for a moment worketh in us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. In other words, it was doing something. It was translating Paul from that uh, Jewish man that was so dedicated to the Mosaic law and the traditions of the elders that he was putting other Jews to death because they were believing that Jesus was the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior. God translated and changed that man on the road. It began on the road to Emmaus when he was smitten blind and then healed and filled with the Holy Ghost. And he kept that weightier matters continually, being beat, being stoned, being whipped 40 times with stripes, 40 times, save one, was it three times? Stoned to death and drug out, thrown on a, a pile of rubbish there to, to rot and decay. And there's enough life, or either God brought him back to life, one of the two, that he raised him back up, and Paul began. I, Paul had to be a, a disfigured-looking man. He had teeth possibly knocked out, the facial bone structure messed up, and uh, I don't know how strong his voice was. God would have had to help him in order for him to be able to preach. But he said these light afflictions. What we go through in our servitude to God, we can say we sacrifice for God, but they're just light things compared to what our Lord and Savior went through for us. But the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, O death, where's thy sting? Death 
has a deadly sting. It's based on the condemnation in the Garden of Eden. From dust thou art to dust thou shalt return. And the returning to dust was death. He said the day ye eat thereof you'll die. Spiritually they died and then physically they died later. Adam and Eve. And death had a sting for it. And the sting of death is still very much in operation today. We need that anti-venom that comes from knowing Christ. Said, uh, they shall take up serpents and it won't harm them. That's an anti-venom. Drink any deadly thing, it won't harm them. That's taking the sting out of death. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death, next verse, Michael. The sting of death is sin. Where does death get its power to destroy a soul? Where does that come from? It comes from the very individual that dies in the sense that sin is in control of their life. They haven't met the giver of life. Or if they met him, they refused him. Or if they met him, they left him. Otherwise, the blood of the Lamb of God is stronger than any sin. It'll deliver you from past sins, present sins, and Brother Muir said it will eternally deliver you. It will destroy that that causes sin. The strength of sin is the law. Without the law, men wouldn't even know what sin was. But since the law came, we know what sin is. And so we're striving to get out of the sinning business through the help of God, through the assistance of the Word of God and of the Spirit of God. In the next verse, Michael 57, But God be thanked, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory. I can't do it. I've heard people say, I can't do it. Well, I agree with you. You can't. I can't either. Without the divine assistance of God. But I can do it with the help of God. And you can do it with the help of God also. Brother Rader said, a person says, I can't do it. You can't do it. Nobody can do it. He said, if you believe you can't do it, you won't be able to do it. But I can do it with God's help. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Who in the world is he talking about? Who's in the world? It's the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the hearts of men. The Adamic nature, the carnal nature, the carnal mind is enmity against God, cannot understand the things of God, is not subject to the law of God, but it is subject to the law of sin and death. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory <clears throat> through our Lord and Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, precious Savior. Nobody like him. Nobody compares to him. The first man is of the earth, earthy. All in Adam died. The second Adam, second man was a Lord from heaven. All in Christ lived. What great power our Savior has. There's power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb of God. 
Nobody like him. Nobody's ever been born like Jesus. Virgin birth, no man ever came that way but him. No man ever lived like Jesus. No man ever walked like Jesus, talked like Jesus, and loved like Jesus. We're striving to learn how to, but he did it from the cradle to the grave. Nobody lived like him. Nobody talked like him. Nobody walked like him. Nobody has the power that he's got. Glory. Woo! Glory to God. He's a wonder of wonders. He's a keeper of time. He started the time clock with the Father. And he'll end the time clock when he says time will be no more. It'll obey his command. When he says there's no more death, it'll obey his command. He's a wonder of wonders. He's captivated my heart and your heart. I'm fascinated with him. I fell in love with him. I desire him. I want to be with him now and forevermore. Don't you? Don't you want him? Draw close to him. Draw up to him. Near him. No king like him. Many kings, good kings and bad kings, have lived in this world. But there's no king like him. He's the king of kings. There's no lord like him. He's the lord of lords. There's doctors and physicians, but he's the great physician. He's a healer of soul and body. He can do what no man nor any group of men nor any generation of men can do. Nobody's done what he's done. He's seated beside the Father. Nobody's worthy to sit in that seat. We can sit in thrones with him, round about him, the four beasts and the 24 elders. But he's the one and only Son of God. He's the one and only created Son of God. He's the beginning and the end. Nobody else can hold that title. He's the archangel. No other angel can hold that title. He's Michael, God's great warrior. Woo! Nobody holds that position but our Lord and Savior. He's the one that walked in the fiery furnace. He's the one that made covenant with Abraham. He's the one that died on the cross of Calvary, poured out his soul unto death that redeemed mankind. Nobody, nobody can do what he did. Our respect, our love, and our honor for him is insufficient, dear God. Oh, God, give us the ability to express ourselves to say who he is and what he is and believe with all of our heart yes. to trust him, yes. to trust him and believe in him. Amen. Nobody died like he died. That death that brought an atonement, that was a sacrifice that ended all blood sacrifices, no man, Abraham didn't, Peter didn't, James and John, Peter crucified, James beheaded, but none of them died like Jesus. No man was resurrected like Jesus was. He's the first one Others have resurrected, but not like what happened to him. Not like where he went. People go to heaven, but nobody has gone to where he's gone. Nobody sits in his place. Nobody has the glory that was given to him. The Father said, Thy throne, 
Oh, God is a throne of righteousness. All the other angels, they worship him. All the bride members, all the earth dwellers, they worship him throughout eternity. We will worship him, the one and only Savior, King of kings, Lord of lords, and what a friend. What a friend. He's greater than any friend you've got. You may have a wonderful friend, but he'll leave you someday through death or you'll leave him. But this friend will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's worthy. He's worthy. Verse, verse 58, Michael. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Oh, have faith in God. Have faith in Jesus. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him with everything you have. Don't have anything. Don't have any affection, any love, any relationship with any other being that would cause you not to love God. Is there anybody that if they died today and you buried them tomorrow, would it cause you to distrust God? Would it cause you not to hold faith in God? The nearest, dearest thing to your heart, your children, what would happen? What would you say? What would you do when that death comes knocking on the door of your family? What would you say to God? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, he, oh my God, he die, shall continually be in my mouth because of who he is and what he is. And he will never change. He will never lose his power. Therefore be steadfast, unmovable. I shall not be, I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the waters. God, I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never back up. I will never move. I will stand, God, for my love and my faith in you, for what you've done, for who you are, and what you're going to do. Be steadfast, unmovable, always, always abounding in the work of the Lord. There's a work for you to do. You've got a work to do. Abound in it. Get it done. Finish the job. Work for God. For as much as you know. You know it. You not just think it. Not just a good warm feeling about it. For much as you know that your labor, that's the abounding of the work. There's work and labor in God. That your labor is not in vain. It's not in vain. It's not useless, worthless. It's not in vain in the Lord. When you get older, you can start feeling unnecessary, unneeded. No, you're needed. Everybody's needed. Everybody's got labor and work to do. Not just to build the church. Not just to build the kingdom, but to build your life in God. That's the most important thing. For you to get eternal life. For you to finish this race. For you to be able to live with our Father throughout eternity. What a great and mighty God we have. Oh, I love the Lord here this evening. I appreciate God coming to be with us and helping us. I need him, don't you? I need him, and I need you. We need one another. Lord, help us to walk together and walk with you. Walking together is not good enough. 
Many men walk together, but we want to walk with God. We want another footprint of the man of Galilee. He that walked upon the waters, we can too. Many have been swallowed up. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, the earth opened up and swallowed up them and everything pertaining to them. I've seen the earth swallow up God's children. God, spare us and keep us. Don't let this world swallow us up. Help us to walk dedicated and separate from this world. Help us to be sanctified, set apart. Our God is worthy. He's worthy of our love and our servitude and our labor. And I'm ashamed to even mention any labor because I've not did anything worthy of mentioning compared to Christ, his servitude to God, and to compare to our elders that I've seen them serve their they're God unto death. Lord, help us to be faithful unto death. Amen. Sister Nellie, you got a song? Yes. God's here with us, children. Yes, Do you? I feel him. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you love him tonight? Praise him. Do you love him enough to praise him and tell him about it? Appreciate you. Talk to him. Yes.